Pleased to welcome Ross Gardner from the Open Source uh, Advisory Service in the UK, Ross Watch. Thank you very much, Ross. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, so uh, my name's Ross Gardler. Uh, I'm from, as David said, Oswatch, which is uh, a JISC-funded service um, who advise on all things open source. Um, I come from an open source background. I also come from a research background, and I also come from a music background, but that's not kind of relevant today. Um, eight, eight years in the music industry, followed by um, about six to six years as a, a, a academic, teaching and researching, um, and studying in that time as well, um, and also about seven years in the commercial open source space. Um, and when I took the job here at Oswatch three years ago, um, I genuinely believed that I could take my experience from the commercial open source section sector and drop it down into the academic environment and everything would be fine. We'd be able to do this collaborative software development. So I'm talking about sharing of software code as opposed to sharing of data. Of course, that was a pretty naive view. I hadn't spent long enough in research to realise just how difficult it can be to change a culture. Um, and people here are saying how difficult it is to talk about sharing data. Well, we're further behind on terms of sharing software. Um, so, over the three years I've been learning more and more about um, the sector and how to make these changes. Um, I've employed an anthropologist who helped me put this stuff together to help me understand the social change that's required and so on. And over that time, as well as me growing to understand the sector, the sector has started to understand more about openness. And open innovation is something that's being talked about quite a lot in the sector now, particularly in the GISC who fund us. They've just completed a uh, landscape study of um, innovation and open innovation in the sector. Um, and I looked at this and I thought, well, hang on a minute, open source is open innovation. So maybe that's a route that we can go down. So what is open innovation? It's research collaboration. It's the idea of sharing ideas and coming up with new ideas and making things happen as a result of collaboration. There's four types as defined by Ata Bidiago. No idea if that's pronounced right, but kind of English pronunciation of a foreign name. So sorry if, uh, if that's wrong. I'm sure they're not here, so it's okay. Um, Inter-organisational open innovation is something that our sector is reasonably good at. That's collaborating inside the walls of our university. We're quite good at that. It can fall down sometimes when collaborating across departments, but usually we're pretty good at it. Inter-organisational, we're pretty good at that too. We do collaborate with other organisations, other institutions, other commercial bodies, etc. We do fairly well at that, although it does get more difficult, of course. User innovation is the next stage. That's where you involve users in the innovative practices. And we think we're good at that. But let me tell you, we're not. We're rubbish at it. What we do is we go to the user and say, what's your problem? And then we go away and solve it. We might come and talk to them now and again. And of course, I'm generalising. I'm probably offending some people around here. I just heard Garrel Muttle thumbs in. I don't know if... I think she said, no, we don't. And, and it is true of some people that they do genuinely engage with users throughout. So, but generally speaking, as researchers, we tend to work within our own teams and our own environments. And what we certainly don't do very well, in most cases, is collective innovation, which is commonly known as crowdsourcing. And I looked at this and I said, well, open source is really right down here at the bottom. It is crowdsourcing at its best. Well, at least open source at its best is crowdsourcing at its best. So, that's essentially what I'm saying here. Open source is about all the things we're familiar with. It's about open source licenses. It's about open standards. Um, but what many people don't realise is it's actually a, it's a development methodology. People think open source is about a license, but it's not. The license was created to protect a development methodology. And that development methodology is about open innovation, it's about collaboration, it's about user innovation, it's about crowdsourcing. And for this to happen, we need strong leaders with vision to communicate to the crowds what's going to happen or what they believe is going to happen. And also, leadership is about listening to the crowds and adjusting what it is that you're going to do. And that's where the strength of open innovation from user innovation and downwards um, really comes along. It's the sharing of expertise and resources. We've had quite a lot of presentations this morning about sharing data as a resource. Very little about sharing expertise. 
So, an example, let's consider the internet. Anybody in this room think that the internet is not a significant innovation of our lifetime? Okay, well, it's a fairly safe question to ask that one. Um, how did it come about? Well, there was a few, a very few big ideas. Things like the initial protocols, HTTP, TCP, IP, those kind of things. Um, the idea of web server clients, which of course comes from the old mainframe days. Um, things like the REST APIs that allow clever technologies to communicate in an efficient way. But there's many, many more small, and I've put small in inverted commas because these things turn into large innovations. Well, things like Twitter and social networking, which they're not that groundbreaking as an idea. Hey, you can send 140 characters to people, fantastic. But actually it's a very innovative idea and people are beginning to learn how to use it now. Then we, we're good at that. In the academic sector we're very good at ideas. Then we move into implementation. There's two stages to implementation. There's um, uh, prototyping and experimenting. Anybody here remember Gopher at the early days of the internet? <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic, wasn't it? Wow, this is superb. Where is it now? It's been replaced by hypertext and HTML and things like that. Um, so it's not that everything is sustainable, it's not that everything is going to work, it's that we need a process that's going to allow us to sustain the things that are going to work and everything has a good idea. Even Gopher had a fantastic idea in it, this, this drilling down of menus and which led to hypertext ultimately. We then need to have incremental improvements on that. So the web browser for example, the web browser of today is not like the first web browser I ran. I'm sure it's not like the first web browser anybody in this room ran. It's, it's, it's been built on continually. There's not been huge different changes along the way. There's been incremental steps along the way. And a lot of that has happened, not exclusively because there's been open source browsers out there, but certainly it's accepted that the open source web browser is the most innovative of the web browsers and everybody else is playing catch up to the extent that they've managed to turn a 98% market dominance around to 50% in some countries now. I think it's about 28% in the UK at the moment. And they're still leading on innovation, even though at one point they only had 2% of the market. And that is enabled by software reuse. And that's what I'm really talking about today. How do we reuse software? Carol's reusing my experiment on, on another project there. That's fantastic. You didn't have to reinvent the wheel. It helps that Carol is part of the My Experiment project as well. But how would it happen if I wanted to reuse my experiment? I mean, I'm not part of it. And the next stage is operation. In operation, we do this terribly in the academic sector. It's taking it to market. But then we're not in the business of taking it to market. So we shouldn't really worry about that. <coughs> but we should worry about the fact that so many innovations in our sector are never taken to market when they could be. And that's what open innovation is about. So it's enabling, I want to look at how we enable software to go from the good ideas that we're good at, the prototypes that we're reasonably good at, the implementations which we're not so good at, and then on into sustainability through the operation uh, activities. So, how do we measure software reusability?